To get started with typings, really all you have to do is here is you come in here in your terminal, say typings, init. Just like everything else. Obviously mine threw an error because I already have it. That's why I threw an error. And it will just initialize a file right here. And I think it gets this name from your package.json. And that's it. Um, and then as far as like installing typings, typings, install, and then the name of the one you want to install. In this case, let's say node, um, and then dash dash save. I think this is actually going to throw an error. Let me see. Yeah, so this one threw an error, and that's because node is a ambient typing. As I just found out, ambient means that node exposes other typings to other modules. So you have to do the ambient flag on it like this which is what the error was recommending. Yes, that's the one that I want. Thank you. Da, 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 da. So once that installs, it's going to take care. Oh, there it is. So you notice, <coughs> boom, it put that in there for me, just like a package.json. So you should never be writing to this file. It's a live file that's going to be updated, just like the package.json. Uh, so I mean, maybe there's some things you have to write in here, but Maybe you, you set it once and you, you don't write it again, but it's a live file. It's going to be updated all the time. So you never should have to do it if you have the typings. So now that we have this node here, if we go into typings folder and we go into, um, what is it? I noticed for you it picked up definitely typed, but when I installed it, it doesn't come from there at all. Where did it come from? <clears throat> the registry, ET. Oh, it might be pointing to the same thing eventually, but that's weird. Like I said, typings, grabs from different places, maybe. I don't know how it resolves which one to grab first, but something like that. So here's the, here's the DTS file. This is what it looks like. It's just a whole bunch of cryptic TypeScript that defines uh, how your tooling is going to support the framework or the library or the code that you're trying to use. So this is how our linter and stuff knows about Node. Somebody went and wrote this, de this definition type file to expose metadata about Node and all its methods. So now I can get access to that inside of here. So that's pretty much typings. And you can install anything you want. So if you, like for instance, if you want to install Lodash with Node, and then maybe you want the typings for Lodash, you should probably look it up in typings. You can come up in here and you can say typings, search, and Lodash. And then like, yeah, we have one. It's Lodash, there it is then you know that there's a typing definition file for it. So it's pretty cool. Um, any questions on typings? Nope, nope. OK. Um, the other thing you have to do is you have to set up. What up, real quick? We have a question. Yes. Uh, what was the command for typings with node and ambient? I just got it for them. OK. Oh. Yeah. It was just Boom. install node dash dash ambient dash dash save. Da, 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 da. Thanks, James. Cool. Uh, and then the linter, I do recommend using the linter. <laughs> Obviously, mine is like crutched right now. So, um, but I do recommend using the linter. The really cool thing about this is though, there's this thing called ng2lint that has specific linter rules for Angular 2. I highly recommend installing that and mm -hmm. telling your linter about it, which is what I'm doing here. And then, then you can expose these rules. Like for instance, if you make a component, it must have a selector name, and it must be kebab case. It's pretty legit. I think that's really, really cool, um, and stuff like that. So these are specific to Angular 2 linting rules, which I think is amazing. Uh, so how do I recommend doing that? But out the box, the linter will work for basic TypeScript. This just gives it Angular 2 linting abilities as well. And then, of course, depending on what ID you, IDE you have, you need to install the appropriate plugin for your linter, which is mostly going to come down to npm installing globally tslint, which is what most of the linters are based on. So make sure you have that globally installed, just like you would with eslint or jscs or jslint or whatever linter you have. It's the same process. Cool. And the last thing is the tsconfig. So. The compiler reads this, and maybe whatever plugin you might have in your IDE will also read this 
Um, so this is just telling it, you know, what to do. Like for instance, compile on save. If you had TypeScript running in Sublime, I know that plugin will, if you set this to true, it'll like compile it and open it up in a new tab. Like here's your code. Don't want that every single time. Build on save. So this is just a way for you to configure it. Because we're running it from the command line, we don't really need all this stuff. We're not live transpiling our code on the fly. So I just turned it all off. Um, and then like here are the, f here are the files that we're telling the TS config or it's the, uh, the TypeScript compiler that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be using this file, this glob of files, and, and this file. Obviously we need to put in the other typings that we installed, like node, the stuff that I just installed, we will put them here too. So you need to put that stuff in there. You can also just do a glob for like all your typings and you'll still be fine. Um, and then if you don't really remember all this, that's totally fine. If you npm install TSC globally, you'll get this nice TSC thing here that broke and you can say TSC, I wanna say dash dash init. I get an error because I already have one, but if I didn't have one, let's, let's just remove it. And then run it again, boom, it'll create one for you. And yeah, very minimal, but yeah, it'll create one. So if you made it through all of that and you ran it, let's see, hopefully mine still works. Cause I just erase a lot of stuff. A lot of confidence in myself right now. So if you made it through all of that, looks like mine is working. And you built this thing. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, mine doesn't work because I just deleted a whole bunch of stuff and did a lot of stuff. But yeah, you get the point. But what's going on in here? Why did it put it here? Yeah, I messed mine up a lot. So that's, that's the tour of the build system. So it's okay if you don't understand everything, it's totally fine. But at least you're familiar, at least you know the moving parts. You might not know what to do with them. You might not know when to recognize them and what's happening. But you know the moving parts, you know what's involved. So it won't be as like magic. Uh, so, but there are a lot of pieces. And like I said, these are like the foundations of those pieces and then we just add more to them. Like more rules for the linter, more stuff for Webpack, more bundling, more optimizing, all this other stuff. So, but this is the foundation. Most of the other stuff after this is just adding plugins and stuff like that. Cool, any questions? All right. Next <laughs> item, pad tie. <laughs> all do right. You, I have one question for you. Yes. Do, do you have a, uh, a seed project you recommend for this sort of stuff? A, a starter project for this? Yeah, yeah. like a, a seed that you would generally refer to. Oh, for. actually I don't, no. But I, I, I could make one yeah. if that would help. No. No. Okay. No, yeah, I was just wondering if there was something you would usually refer to just to make your life easier or if you would start that yourself. Yeah, I'm kind of weird. I usually just start it myself and, yeah. until I'm like really comfortable with it. Like when it comes to like build systems and stuff, I, that's like the one thing that I do over and over and over again. But then everything else I'm like fine using a project for or, or starter for. But for, when it comes to build systems, I don't know why. Like I just feel like I have to do it yeah. because like it's so unique to my project that like I'd rather just build it myself than download somebody else's and like have to change it and figure out why they did this and erase this because I don't have that repo or that, that folder. Mm -hmm. So like I usually just do it myself, but that's just me. <laughs>